easy i bought tutorial 90 seconds blender i tutorial easy simple fast nope we're gonna do it the most complicated way possible but the result is that we're going to be able to completely change the size of the pupil such that the iris can completely disappear or that the whole eye can completely disappear you'll be able to change the iris depth the iris size uh the iris to turn it into a slit you'll be able to change the size of the cornea uh, the depth of the cornea and everything and in the end you'll just end up with a single object and all the controls will be inside the modifier so pretty clean as well let's hop right into it this is blender 3.1 better i'm just going to spawn in a uv sphere and in edit mode with all points selected i'll just rotate them 90 degrees on my x axis and I will then delete all of these front facing faces and then I'll select this edge loop I'll click right click extrude edges then I'll press S 0 0.001 and that will essentially get all of these verts to be super close to the center but not quite overlapping at zero and I'll right click again and click extrude edges but this time I won't move them at all I just want this next set of edges completely overlapping the first I need to select all of them so I'll hop on to the other side and press shift Z and with one I'll select all of these words make sure I have increment snap with absolute grip snap so that I can put them back at the one meter mark this is important okay then in my geometry node setup which might look different from yours I just need to make sure I have a geometry node editor open I'll click new to actually get the geometry nodes and let's just look at this eyeball from the side like this from my orthographic view with alt and middle mouse button and if I was to draw that I would get this cross section representation if I just take the top point for example its position is relative to the object origin which is currently in the center of the sphere right and its position would be something like 0 0.01 like that's the z axis and it would we can think of it as a vector that's starting from the center of the eyeball so it would go up like this just a solid vector and let's talk a little bit about cross product of two vectors so if i'm looking at a flat plane with two vectors that are on the plane and are perpendicular to each other then the cross product of these two vectors would be another vector that is facing me essentially going towards the screen or if i see this in the 3d view these would be the two initial vectors and the third one would be poking up just like that so if i take this vector and then a vector that is pointing away from my iris remember this is my iris right here like on this side this is where we did all of those deletions because it's going to be our iris in the future then if i take the cross product of these two vectors this would be another vector that is facing me and then what I can do is I can rotate this vector which is just the position using this new vector as the axis of rotation essentially rotating it this way just like that to anywhere in this case if I want to rotate it all the way it would be over here and that would be a 90 degree rotation and this works for any point so point over here we just get this again going all the way or as much as we want over here and in 3d space for example a vector over here would probably rotate just like that arc the way we wanted to so let's go ahead and do that with uh, a little bit of vector math so vector math node set that to cross product and what we want to use is our position because as we said that is basically our vector well over here we're just going to set y to minus one because that is the away facing vector i don't think i wrote that down uh, but basically minus one on the y so I'll take the cross product of this vector and then I'll plug that in through a vector rotate as the axis right and then the vector I'm going to be rotating is this position yet again and to actually move these things I will use a set position node where I will plug the result into position now if I change this angle you're going to see that our verts are indeed moving in a sphere however they're all moving the same amount and I don't want that basically I want verts that are over here very close to move very little while words that are very far to move more essentially i just need their length but not just like the straight length between them but rather the uh, length of this arc right here we can call that s for example and how am i going to get the length of this arc well if i hop over to wikipedia circular segment you see that this s uh, we can actually get it if we scroll back down a little bit s is equal to 
theta times the radius. Now theta is just this angle right here, that is theta, while the radius is 1. So we don't really have to worry about it because when you multiply by 1, nothing really changes. And the radius is 1 because, as you can see, we have a unit sphere right here. All the points are exactly 1 meter away. So how am I going to get this angle? Well, in order to get this angle, uh, I would need to use the dot product. So what is a dot product between two vectors? If I have two vectors that are the same length and are perpendicular to one another, they have a dot product of 0. If they are away from one another, that's dot product of minus 1. And if they are facing one another, overlapping right here, that's a dot product of 1. So a minus 1 over here, 1, 0. And as you can already see, uh, this dot product actually has the angle between these vectors somehow like embedded into it. Uh, but how are we actually going to get this angle? Well, for that we just need to Google dot product to angle. And you're going to see right here on this image that it is simply the arc cosine of the dot product divided by the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied. Now the magnitude is just their length and as I said all points are one meter away. So this just cancels out because they're both one. And then that means that I just need to get the arc cosine of the dot product. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, in other words, what I would need to get is another vector mat, set that to dot product, and I'm going to get the dot product of the position, and again this backwards facing vector. And then this is what is going to be driving my angle. However, I do also want to pass that in through a arc cosine, remember that. So get arc cosine. And then another math node in order for me to actually control this value. And now you see whenever this value is 1, the eyeball is completely gone. When it's 0, the iris is completely gone. And we can control that. I'll hold shift to move it more smoothly. Uh, there we go. So that's basically the movement of our pupil done. Uh, I'll leave this to something like 0 0.5 and let's talk about the iris. Currently, the iris is moving along with our pupil. I don't really want that. So I'll just have to mask it out from this movement. Now remember the iris is currently the only edge, uh, if I reduce this quite a bit, imagine this is the iris currently, the iris is overlapping with this last edge, remember how we did that extrusion in the end, and the iris is the only edge that only has one face connected to it. So I can use that property to mask it out if I get the edge neighbors node, which actually gives me the face count connected to each edge. I'll just plug this in through a math node, where I will say, okay, every face that is uh, greater than uh, every edge that has more than one face, which is all of these except the iris, is what's get effect getting affected by the set position. And if I do that now, you see that our iris is back essentially. Uh, you can see that, right? How it hops out before it was overlapping with these edges. And now, if I start to move this uh, once again, my uh, pupil, you can see that the iris is staying input or what's about to become the iris. And at this point, you can just get a group input and plug this value for the pupil uh, outside. And if I click it in right here, I can set a minimum and a maximum value. Uh, going to my modifiers, you can see that when the value is 1, it disappears. When the value is 0, it's right there. So I will just call this pupil size. And that's exactly what it is going to control. So about the iris, well, to move the iris, it's not that complicated. It's just another set position node. And remember, this mask is for the iris, uh, but it gives me currently all other points. So I just need to flip it. And to flip that, I will just use a Boolean mat set to not, which exactly flips a 0 to 1 value uh, to make it 1 to 0. So now I can test this out if I move this on Y. You can see my iris is indeed moving. Uh, however, I just the first thing, let's talk about scaling. Because currently the iris is a bunch of points that are in a circle that are very close together. In order to, basically, I want to move them all outwards. And currently, if I really zoom in, you will see that their position is already sort of in the way we want. If this is my eyeball, right, and over here are the points of the iris, well, their position relative to the object origin is just a, a bunch of vectors that are going like this, right? But if I flatten these vectors on the y-axis, then suddenly uh, they're going to become, uh, if I flatten these vectors out, they will suddenly become like this. In other words, bulging out in every direction in a circle. Or if I'm looking at from the front, uh, they would really be going in every direction. 
So we need to flatten this on the y-axis and to do that I will just take their position, plug that through a vector mat node which I will just set to multiply and set these to 1 and flatten the y-axis to 0. All right. So then if I just plug this into the offset you see that they flinch a little bit that's because we want to normalize these vectors currently I flattened them but their size is very tiny and if I normalize a vector uh, what that means is if you have two vectors with different sizes one is too big one is uh, too small like 0, 5 and 1.5 then once I normalize them they will keep their direction uh, but they will both have the same magnitude also called length sometimes uh, 1 and I want to do that, so I'll just duplicate this node and set it to normalize. And then if I zoom out, uh, although what I need to normalize is them after they have been flattened, you will see that now they go out one meter away, exactly. And that is great, and I, I might want to control for that. So if I can just scale it, right, that would help me. Uh, however, I actually want to move the X and the Y independently. So to fix that, I will just use a separate XYZ, which will take this vector and separate it into three components. And then I will use a combine XYZ, which I will plug the X in directly, the Z in directly, and the Y I'll just set to zero. And what this means now is if I plug this into offset and I just scale this vector after the normalize, with another scale node and now we can see how this is going to be our control for the size of the address so I'll just get a group input plug that out uh, call this bad boy iris size and I want this to go from 0 to 1 and you can see how 1 is a 1 meter size of the iris 0 completely overlapping All right. and for the Y that would be just this Y Right, so I'll just plug that out directly and I will call it iris depth. And now I have a control for the depth of the iris, for the size of the iris, and for the slit of the iris, what we actually need to do is just multiply this x because the x, as you can see over here, goes like that. So that is just the math node set to multiply. If I set it to zero, that would completely close that slit, and one you can see gives us this kind of opposite effect. So I would also plug this over here and I would call it iris slip, which again 0 to 1. And whenever it is 1, well currently it's flipped, so I would just pass it through a mat node in order to flip it back uh, by subtracting it from 1, that will flip the 0 to 1 value. And now when it's 0, no slit, when it's 1, we have that iris slip. At this point we're actually done with the majority of the work. I now have a control for the slit, I'll probably disable that. I have a control for the size of the pupil, such that I can make it completely disappear if I so wanted to. And a control for the depth of the iris. So I'll just set this up to look semi-normal. So I'll probably push it out like this. I'll, I'll give it a pretty big iris so we can see what's happening. So let's talk about the cornea. Uh, how is the cornea actually going to work? It's not too complicated for the cornea. I'm going to go into edit mode uh, and then I'm just going to shift A to spawn in an icosphere with a pretty high resolution, something like 4 and this is going to effectively be our cornea. Now I do want to mask this cornea away from both of these transformations and I can do that using the mesh island. Now the mesh island actually gives me a unique number for every connected uh, series of faces basically and I know the uh, icosphere which is going to be my cornea is a separate mesh from the rest of my eyeball. So what I'm going to do is the island index starts from 0. So I can straight up use that as a 0 and 1 for my cornea and for the rest of my eye and I just need to combine it with this rule over here using a boolean mat. So I'll just get a, oh, not a boolean, a boolean mat. Uh, let's first try to get it right over here. Uh, where I will just plug in the island index. Oh, okay, see it's flipped. I'm actually moving the icosphere. So in order to flip it back, I will have to pass that through a knot. And now I am changing the size of my pupil, but the soon-to-be cornea isn't moving. So how do I actually make this cornea go out a little bit? Uh, because I know now that this straight up gives me a selection for the cornea. 
what I can do is just a set position that uses this cornea selection, which is just the island index. I can test that out. You can see that only moves our cornea. Uh, I'm going to use the Y position of the cornea as the map for the movement. So get position and real quickly separate XYZ and then combine XYZ again. Plug this in and what I really care about is the Y. So currently the Y goes from minus one to one so I'll just do a map range where I will take this Y value that comes in from minus one to one and I'm going to use it to push on the Y again. Okay, so if I plug that into the offset, what I should see is first of all everything moves up. But if I bring in this minimum value we're mapping from, uh, we'll see that we're sort of changing how far the pushing starts. Okay, and then if I bring in this two maximum value, that would be the strength of our push, essentially giving us a cornea. All right, uh, for a different result, you can also go to smoother step. You can see how that affects the shape of the cornea. I don't know which one looks like a more realistic cornea, so I'll just keep it on linear for now. Uh, and the problem is the cornea is currently overlapping with the rest of my eyeball. So I'll just do another set position. Uh, where I will move all the faces um, away, which just move, which just means uh, moving them in relation to their position on the uh, object axis. Because remember the where did all my drawings go? Down? Yeah, uh, remember the position of the points is already a vector that is going in the direction we would need if you want to push uh, these uh, cornea parts away. So I will just use the island index is the selection once again and I will just move them on the position you can see how that blows it up and what I would just need to do is vector mat to scale this bad boy down so zero would be like that and I'll go to the front front view press shift Z and move it out as much as I feel looks good something like that of course you want the control for these things so again grab a group input uh, I will get this to maximum well first of all the from minimum which is sort of the cornea size and also this two maximum which is the cornea push so how do we set up the materials well in order to if I just give it a default material right now this would probably be applied to all the faces uh, but uh, to make things easier I'll just have this be the iris material which currently is applied to our faces and I'll make it something that we can tear it apart like red uh, if I go into my shadow preview, there we go. Uh, then if I go into edit mode and I'll just select all of the, well, I'll disable the modifier real quickly. And I will make sure to select all of the icosphere points with L. I can straight up go into the materials and give them another material. Uh, I'll assign it to them right now. And we will call this cornea, which would just be white with like maximum transparency, maximum transmission, minimum roughness. Uh, just like that. We definitely want, if we're going to be using EV, to have uh, screen space reflections. And I will assign this to the corner. You can see it now. If I, if I press H, I will hide that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these faces on the outside, which are basically the faces of our... Uh, I think it's called the sclera. Why can't I select these? There you go. So if I add another material, uh, assign this and just call it sclera and then just make sure that this is a material that doesn't have any transmission. If I go into edit mode then out H to unhide everything. If I just enable the modifier, definitely want to give it a shade smooth for everything. Uh, how do I actually see inside the eyeball? I would need to go into the EV and go into screen space reflections, turn these on, also turn on refractions and now we can see that we're basically there. Iris depth a little bit, or rather the iris size. However, it looks like two of these words I missed, I didn't apply the correct material to. So I'll fix that uh, by disabling this, selecting all these, pressing hide. And I know that these words are just the ones over here. So I'll face back shift Z to select all the words that are here and then I will assign the red material again. I hope this works. There we go. The rest of this tutorial is really just making sure the materials look good. So in my shader editor, I have my iris selected. I'm just going to use an image texture. 
so I will link these textures in the description they're very great textures uh, just plug this into base color uh, you can see ah uh, UVs I totally forgot to talk about UVs so if you actually select all of these points uh, that are currently well first of all let me disable the modifier so if I have all of these points at the center selected remember shift Z drag from the other side uh, if I just go into my UV editor and I press uh, from the front while well, looking at them from the front with auto graphics so out middle mouse button I press U for UVs and I just do front project uh, I'll get all of them right here sort of in a circle I'll just uh, select edges so I'll press 2 alt left click to select one of these edge loops and then just extrude out until we can sort of see it until it sort of encompasses one meter and then I'll select all of them I'm go to UV back islands to make sure we're using the entirety of the space uh, and you can also extrude these ones in the middle if in fact you definitely want to do that so I'll just go to the middle and I'll start extruding until we get something sort of like an eye if I re-enable the modifier I need to just enable the shader editor and then I'll just eyeball <laughs> get it uh, eyeball this until we can sort of see everything correctly this looks fine to me see now we have our eyeball what really bothers me sometimes is the cornea so I want a way to kind of hide that sometimes because it can mess me up in order to hide that I'll just go into my Geonode setup and I'll just use a delete geometry where I'll just delete the sclerer which is just remember our island index number so definitely delete these faces right here uh, however I don't want to always have it deleted so I will just use a switch I'll plug that into here this would be one of the situations and now I can turn it on and off and if I get a group input I would be able to uh, control that from my modifier as well so sclera I would probably say hide sc uh, I keep calling it the sclera but it's the cornea so hide cornea there we go uh, I'm not seeing that my UVs at the edges don't seem to be aligning that nicely so I'm gonna move this up a little bit more cartoonish eyes have this dark outline here I will reproduce that now basically just get your texture coordinates and if I take the UV coordinates and pass them through a uh, vector map uh, which is set to distance uh, this will give me the distance from the center point because uh, remember if I go to my UV coordinates uh, this is the coordinates I'll get so a point here we actually have a vector going like this and the length of this vector is what I'll get with the length well at this point we have a much larger vector so basically we'll end up with values going from 0 to ever greater numbers the further we go from the center uh, however the UVs actually start from over here from the corner so this point would be 0, 05 uh, pump that through a vector map I hope I'm not wrong about this I think I did have to add 0 0.5 to all of them we'll see and then uh, to this distance I will just do map range and I'll plug it in and I will mix RGB right here mix RGB just like that with this being the driver of the mix and I'm going to mix with the color black okay so when I start playing around with this minimum value or rather maybe it needs to be subtract oh distance my bad ah this needs to be uh, length 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 we get the length not the distance I keep making those up okay now you see since I subtracted 0 0.5 I think we're getting the effect we want where I can change the minimum value and it's sort of giving this darker edge uh, which we can control the sharpness of we can control where it starts from uh, so I would play around with this that's sort of going to be our edge for the eyeball and for the color of the eyeball it is just another mix node this time we'll set this one to multiply and maximum factor and this color right here uh, we can pick to be whatever we want so there we go that's pretty much our eyeball and we can also use this map as a normal map so put, uh, plug that into a bump um, or rather we'll be using it as a height map so plug this into the height and make sure color space is non-color and then plug that into normals the distance uh, would probably be too high because it is indeed the distance from uh, it thinks it's one meter now basically I want to kind of reduce that quite a bit uh, that looks fine if I enable the sclera it should look even more convincing play around with this of course play around with the map 
I'm really dialing this up as I go depending on what I'm trying to achieve and that would be most of it however you see that we're now seeing inside our eyeball I'll click the sclera so I can move into the sclera material and then I just want these faces which are reversed to look black so that is simply a mix shader uh, and what I'm going to use over here is the geometry node which can give me uh, back faces so a value of one for faces that are back I will just plug this in and for the second shader I'll just leave it blank and you can see how now we have darkness in the middle alright and I guess if you want to be extra you can also add some material to the sclera because I do believe it has proper UVs so that would be another image texture uh, let's see if I download this one there it is and I will just set this to the base color I'll give it a second to shade and it is reversed so I'll press ctrl T this is a feature of Node Wrangler it just gives you this setup and I guess I will just scale it on Y until it is minus one uh, I guess I basically just need to stretch it and then also move it on the Y if I really want to move them further up uh, there we go now they're going way out way out in fact more than I would like so maybe 0 0.1 something like this so one thing you will notice is that over here this edge can get a bit sharp you can just bevel that uh, afterwards with an angle just change the amount at least two subdivisions I mean segments and you can just soften that up to your heart's content which will also help the shading in this area so that's one thing you can do uh, and overall you can just subdivide the whole thing afterwards just control one to add a subdivision level if you want to get things to be really smooth and yeah I guess this is basically it this is your entire iRig. I think it looks pretty convincing. I mean, if you want to be super fancy about it, go ahead and add even more detail, like a bump map for these veins. You will find the bump map for these veins on the link I'll give you to these textures. And you can really get into it. Uh, what's important and what I really like personally is that all the, you just have a single object, all right? And all of your controls for it are in the modifiers tab and you know the finishing touch is of course just an empty or a bone uh, that you're just gonna have to give it a damped track constraint just like this guy right here and you're basically good to go very simple so yeah definitely play around with this tell me what you think about it because it is a pretty powerful technique I believe very good eye to make the iris completely disappear you just need to set the pupil size to zero uh, but also the iris size and iris depth to zero and you can see how that helps out. Uh, the reason this is happening is because I still have shade smooth here. You can fix that by adding auto smooth. And there we go. Now you can make the eye completely disappear. You can make the cornea disappear. Or rather just set the push to zero. So that's pretty cool, I think. Well, that, that's interesting. And really have fun with it. If you set it up once, you're basically good to go for a lot of eye setups and yep thank you for watching uh, I will have this file up on Gumroad you can definitely download it there for free or you can toss some money my way I won't mind and yeah bye